The title of my presentation is How to Be Successful. Now, the first question you have to ask yourself is why do you want to be successful? Now, I looked at the data for men and women. Now, for men, the data clearly shows that the reason why men want to be successful, uh, that it turns out is, is, is well, uh, why, why, why do you want to be uh, successful? Uh, for, for men, it turns out that the primary reason why men want to be successful, the data just uh, clearly shows that it, 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 it's, it, it's to get chicks is what it comes down to. Now, I do a lot of corporate functions, and I know I can't get up and say get chicks, so I have more of a HR-approved for corporate functions this is like why do men want to be successful for men uh, the data uh, clearly shows uh, the, the the corporate version is that they, they, it's to increase uh, DNA propagation opportunities or DPO and that's uh, the memo apologizing for the speaker that said get chicks now why do men want to be successful after that uh, men want to be successful in order to reach a higher level of mansplaining, which is to be able to pontificate is where men ultimately want to be able to get to. Now for women, for women, uh, why do women want to be successful? Uh, for women, <clears throat> it turns out that um, um, I, I, I don't really know. Um, now, uh, this does not to imply that I don't think it's important or I don't care. It's just that I know that if I got into this topic, I would get into trouble. So I'm going to skip over it and let somebody else, another speaker, address that question. But this does bring me to my success flowchart, which is gender neutral. So the first step of my success flowchart is the question, uh, do you want to be a uh, success. So now if the answer to that is no, all you have to do is get premium cable and you'll be all set. Now during this whole uh, virus crisis time, it seemed like everybody is over here. So beware of that as a way to take you out of uh, a success path. Now, on the other hand, uh, you do want to be a success. The next very important question you have to ask yourself is very important. It's like, well, are you okay with being an asshole? Um, now, I realize it's kind of harsh language and not necessarily something the HR department would be happy with. So I have an HR approved version of asking that question which is, uh, well, uh, do, do, you need, do you need sensitivity training? Uh, basically implies the same thing. But I actually, myself, I prefer the more direct and harsh language of you, are you okay with being an asshole? Because if you're working in a competitive corporate environment and you're not using the word asshole, you're probably not going to go anywhere. So if the answer to that is yes, then uh, goes down to this point here, which is, I can't help you. If he's down there, I can't help you. You're all set there. Now, on the other hand, you're, you're not comfortable with this personality profile, and you do want to be a success. It gets much more complicated. It gets much more complicated. Then the next one is, well, were you born with a lot of money? Uh, are you sure you're not an asshole? But it all feeds down here, which is, I can't help you. And that's the honest motivational message right here. I can't help you. Because the typical, the typical motivational message looks like this. This is what it seems to be out there in abundance uh, for motivating people. And this is what they do. So they say, so you have this goal. You have this goal behind this brick wall, and you're supposed to fire yourself at this brick wall, uh, fail, uh, believe in self, uh, read a stupid book typically written by and sold by the speaker, and just keep repeating this process in buying more books, when actually the most helpful and honest motivational message would be maybe you should give up. Um, maybe this goal 
is not in your wheelhouse, as they say. Now, some people have embraced uh, the brick wall and just worry about the things that they can control in their life. Um, we need people like this. Uh, they're very important uh, to the economy, uh, in my opinion. Now, a topic that I've been asked to address quite a bit over the last few years uh, for my company speaking is to address the issue of the multi-generational uh, workplace. Multi-generational uh, workplace. It seems to be much more important these days, even though it's always been going on. Uh, even when, when I started, when I first got out of college, I was over on this side, and over the years I found myself uh, falling more over uh, this way. Now, motivational people, they say this is what you need to do. What you need to do is team building. Team building is what they recommend. That's pretty much the go-to uh, for those, those inspirational people. Um, and so I made a little uh, drawing of a team building uh, just to inject a little humor into the discussion. And then just to add to that, uh, find yourself in the team player team building. So I made a team player team building uh, so you can find where do you fit in the hierarchy of the team player uh, team building uh, just to add a little cynicism into the uh, the discussion. Um, myself, I don't uh, suggest, I don't recommend at all to do outdoor team building, any of those outdoor team building exercises. Um, I, I feel like this is a way companies can kind of cut back on the staff and uh, probably disproportionately with the older staff on those uh, outdoor team building exercises. So I just recommend just stay away from that. Uh, call in sick, uh, have something come up to get away. Now, I have a different approach to that, which is I think it, it's good to just, we all learn a little bit more about the different generations, a little more about the different generations. So I like to start with my grandparents' generation. So my parents' parents, they were all born in the 19th century. All of my grandparents were born in the 19th century. And for them, uh, their goal, their goal was to not die. Um, and the, the obstacle that got in the way of that was that you're probably going to die soon. So kind of easy to understand the motivations of this generation. Uh, then we go forward to my parents' generation, otherwise known as the greatest generation. Uh, their goal was to get a good job and have lots of kids. And what held that up was the Depression and World War II. Um, and after the Depression and World War II, we were able to get a good job and go ahead and have lots of kids and regretted that part ever since. Now we go to baby boomers. For baby boomers, I'm technically I am a baby boomer, but I'm at the later end of it. Most baby boomers came of age in the 1960s, and their goal was to have a groovy life man. Um, and what got in the way of that was uh, the parents kept talking about the Depression in World War II, and this was a serious bummer. Now, uh, most of them are Republicans. You figure out what happened there. This brings us to millennials. For millennials, uh, their goal, their goal is uh, it's a little tricky to do. So their goal is the parent. Got it wrong. Their goal is the parent's goal for the child, um, and the obstacle to that is uh, typically all kinds of reasons. Um, now, how to overcome this obstacle? This is where. Uh, the parent comes into play uh, to take care of the situation uh, by bringing them right over that obstacle like that. So SAT score is not good enough, no problem, we'll fix that. Uh, 
You know, he can't do this with PowerPoint.